Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Alone Today podcast. My name is Joseph. And I am Anu Ola. It's good to be back and it's good to be together again. Mm. Okay, so today we've got an interesting question, a two-legged question Mm -hmm. from Kate. On the one hand, Kate is wondering, how do you undo being sexually attracted to your hopeful future partner? On the other hand, Kate is also wondering, how do you handle being sexually attracted to someone else while you are in a relationship with your hopeful future partner? The fact that Kate is Christian, I'm also choosing to assume that we're not just talking of a random hopeful future partner, (laughs) but a future partner that you believe the Lord has The Lord is in this journey with you. Hopefully, he started the journey Mm. and you are all in it together. But now you're feeling sexually attracted. How do you undo that? My beautiful wife will (laughs) will start us off on this. Okay. Um, Hello again. Uh, How do you handle, the first one, how do you handle being sexually attracted to your intended? Yeah. You embrace the gift God has given you. It's a good thing to be sexually attracted to the person you want to marry. The gift of sexual attraction. The gift of Oof. sexual attraction. It's, it's a, it's a big it's, gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural. It shows all things are working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it shows that the chemistry is there and the physics and everything. It's it just shows you you're, you're human basically, mm. and it's it's a beautiful thing to actually have that before the marriage comes what do you think i'm thinking a song is playing in my head i'm only human after all no, no. The, but the blame and man no, no, that's, that's an excuse that's that, that's, <laughs> that's actually saying i can indulge after all don't put the blame on me so us saying that it's natural and you should nurture it doesn't mean you should in, 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 indulge in it mm, mm, mm. there's the bible verse that says you should flee all appearances of evil yeah so flee like literally don't even flee with your shoes on mm. take off your shoes hold them in your hands and run as fast <laughs> as you can it's, it's a bit ironical that we're saying two opposite things we said oh yeah it's a beautiful thing that you've got but flee from that beautiful thing the, the way it works is we all know you might know that when you're sexually attracted to someone mm-hmm. the next thing that comes to your mind is to test it out Mm. because it's it's give expression to it give expression to it because it's it's a pleasure it's 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 it kind of pulls you Mm. so you want to actually say ah let me see how it works but under under jesus and under our christianhood we can't see how it works it's not our courtship is not for the time it's not the time to see how it works the courtship period is to be grateful that it works (laughs) (laughs) just that premise that oh my god it it worked oh my goodness it works that's mm. that's the one that's thing yeah <laughs> but how it would work is for your marriage bed mm. so what, what are the tips scholar that you can share on how to flee and still nurture um <clears throat> for every every everyone that has quote and unquote ever been a marriage counselor mm. of some sort we we go back to this cycle of always taking questions or issues that we are facing and and trying to address and trying to look at it through the lenses of our experience mm. um, there is a good thing to that but it needs to be qualified that that is coming from your experience mm. uh, because your experience is not everybody's experience mm. i gave that premise to say yeah i'm going to go back to look back to what was it like in in my context okay. um, and in my experience um, <clears throat> and that's not to say that is how it has to be for everybody but specifically for us for the most part of our courtship it was a long distance thing mm. um i think i can almost count on my fingertips how many times we were quote and unquote together like maybe together for some hours or together um i don't even think there was any time that we were together throughout the whole day before marriage mm, you were there was a time i wanted to, when i was coming to the uk when yeah. I came, we came to lagos but you were not with me throughout the whole day. I was. There was a Sunday, all the Sunday services. We start yeah. the church together. And, and you then, stayed till evening. Then I stayed mm, till evening. Yeah, that's interesting. Then we we that were saying flee. Then I stay in your room mm. till evening and mm-hmm. No, you, you were not you were not in my room the whole time. 
I can not the whole I can, time. I can remember clearly that in fact I almost <laughs> felt like I didn't even see you because we're talking of a mission house that is crowded with people, like all sorts not really, of like, people. I guess what you mean. And there were different things that were going on that you were also involved with, like maybe some I think some cooking or whatever. I don't yeah. know what, what was going on in there. So it's a busy mission house. Yeah. And when I was waiting so basically it's just church was finished, yeah. Yeah. But you still had things to do. Yeah. So I had to go wait in your room. But the room is you go into a, a big room and before you walk you, <laughs> you walk through that room before you get to Collar's room and there are lots of people in that big room and the door is always open. Mm. So I think that kind of gave us coverage and awareness that you can't even do anything because if, <laughs> if they walk on you up, if someone walks up on you as a pastor or la and as they do they they have free access to my <laughs> oh room boy. all those wonderful yeah, so, boys. So we do we just we did spend some time, time together. together yeah. yeah. Um, but but <laughs> like like I said, not not that much. Um, not like we're seeing. We're not living in the same city. We're not. I'm saying that someone that gets to see he, he or she is mm. in courtship with mm. very frequently, mm. like physical scene, <laughs> and you are always seeing yourself serious. and taking strolls and talking and looking at each other and seeing seeing beyond what you are seeing. Mm. There is a very high tendency that. This sexual attraction we're talking about will develop faster mm. and can easily go unhealthy. The sexual attraction itself is normal, it's good, but the boundaries you set in place is is ensuring things like that openness. Mm. Uh, you want to go visit, make it in a public place where both of you can where both of you can see yourselves. Mm. You want to be together, be together in, a, in in context that are safe for the for the guiltlessness of your courtship mm. in that sense. And being accountable as well, I think that's very, very, very key. Mm. Before we go to being accountable, yeah. I know that um, Nollywood <laughs> and Hollywood, they've kind of laid a premise for us that when you're caught, when you're courting someone, they should take you out for a meal, a candlelit dinner where the restaurant will be as though all the other tables are shrouded in darkness and it's just the two of you Hallelujah. with your tall glasses of wine just looking into each other's eyes over a candlelit dinner. Eh, please. And you and you wearing some skimpy yes, look at my boots. Straps thingy. Of. It's okay. it's actually nice when we see that on, on, on <coughs> Hollywood. But the thing they fail to project is what would that lead on to? Mm. So they would say, Oh yes, after the candle dinner, it walks you up to your door and, and while you're still fiddling with your key in your purse, it says, Oh, can I come for a drink? Please don't go for a drink. Don't invite him in for a drink. I'm not saying those dinners are bad. I'm saying they do lead to things. Mm. So yes, we should have dinners with uh with for the movies. We, yes, we should go for movies, but after the whole emotional, um, I'm just giving a tip now. Yeah. After the whole emotional, look into my eye. Oh, I like your smile. You're the most beautiful girl in the whole world. Go, go, go stay in like a crowded area, like maybe the reception of the restaurant <laughs> and just shake off, shake off those webs, those <laughs> emotional webs. Yes, they are good to nurture, yeah. but before you move out of that cocoon, mm. shake it off, mm. get your balance, then let him walk you up to your door. Then you can effectively say no. Mm. I don't want you to come in. I had a good time. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow and things like that. And I think being honest with yourself will help because mm. I think what you just described, I mean, vis-a-vis -vis that scripture about fleeing all appearance of evil. Mm. For some people, I think there are some people that you should never go out together <laughs> in that kind of context because you already know the capacities and vulnerabilities and susceptibilities that you have been gifted, quote-unquote, with. So <clears throat> it's not everybody that would be able to successfully go on a date mm. that looks like that. You go to the movie um, late in the night. The movie theaters are always dark. <laughs> and you are watching um, Ramsey Noir and Genevieve Naji do things. Or you are watching, um, who it's are the so contemporary? I'm <laughs> absolutely, I can't imagine myself saying that. I don't watch <laughs> movies Noir, again. Um, let me go Hollywood wise. Who do I know in Hollywood? Um, you don't know their names. I don't know. <laughs> from Jack Bauer, he doesn't kiss and go to the <laughs> That's right. So yeah, wh whatever. But like, yeah, you're seeing a movie and uh, an 18 rated movie, mm. Mm -hmm. and then there are things are yeah, happening, and everywhere is dark, and you're just watching on this massive Innocently. 200 200 inch TV screen. Uh, uh, uh. Especially with it, then you see the latest flawless. 
skin through flawless. Through, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how Hollywood does it that their skin is so flawless. It's it's a crime. They shouldn't be that fine. <laughs> For real, because what it makes, what it pushes to you is like, oh, me that I'm not even perfect, and there's this guy liking me. Mm. Oh, maybe I should be more grateful to him and things like that. So, mm. there are lots of projections in yeah. our world now in that India. makes us feel, yeah, mm. that makes us feel less, and makes us want to appreciate our partners more. And in appreciating them, you want to give more of yourself. Like, mm. maybe I can just let him kiss me. It's not really bad. Mm. People do it, but the more you entertain that thought, the more you you just I don't know the more it, it would be easy to just say I'll go for it whatever but if you know that you are special regardless of your regardless of your flawed skin mm. or your stretch marks or your love handles mm-hmm. or your too big lips or too big nose or your broad forehead like mine if you like yourself and you 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 know you're better than that I know that the lady is coming to my head the lady that did this Titanic movie I think mm-hmm. it's too perfect in Hollywood yeah is it Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but you still put rate yourself higher than them. The more that, that image is in your head, I think the, the firmer you can be to say, this is our stance in this relationship. Let's not compromise. Mm. I am beautiful enough. I am beautiful enough to be waited for. Mm. I am sexy enough. I'm curvy enough to be waited for. So don't just, don't put yourself under pressure wanting to give more mm-hmm. than your capacity or than what Jesus has told us to give. Wow. Yeah, don't, don't, overdue mm. if it's for you it waits if it's not who knows even after the sex it still says um i just had a revelation that god says you're not the best person for me don't punish the devil <laughs> there was a guy that did this to my friend and i was so angry it was like the a spiritual brother in his church always flitting around the church when he came home to my friend's house did what he needs to do and after a few weeks came back to say eh and I don't think what we are doing is right because it's affecting my Christian life. And I'm thinking, what? Are you? Yeah, sorry, I'm on the podcast. But yeah, <laughs> those brothers are like evil. Flee from them. And as a scholar said, you know it. Trust, trust your instinct. Mm. Trust your instinct. You know it. Just don't. <sighs> What's the word? Don't limit yourself. You're beautiful. You're a princess. You're God's child. Mm. Maintain your stance. Even if, if you're feeling pressured and the walls are closing on you. Sure. Jesus is enough. Basically. That's the point. He's enough. It's not just about the man or whether he would stay if you don't give him what he wants. Jesus is enough. Mm. And he would always provide. Trust in his providence and not just what is provided. Mm. Thank you. That's deep. Like that's some really deep heartfelt <laughs> stuff. That's <laughs> true. You're speaking from someone hot. <laughs> that's yeah. you are. But that's fine. That's okay. Right. Okay. 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 Where's that coming from? But yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Okay. So specifically, before we flip it to the other side of the question. Mm. Because again, when I said we had a long distance relationship, that's not to say that this sexual urge thing it did not play out as well in that context. Oh, we did. Um, mm. the, uh, <laughs> one of the things you were doing that I always looked forward to was were those Sunday Sunday Skype videos when you were in the UK and I was in Nigeria. Mm. Um, and watching such videos, then you are just alone, maybe in the toilet or you are wherever, just watching your your lovely, your intended, your yeah, yeah your God given hopeful future partner to use Kate's words um, on screen like that. I mean, you see things that you see beyond what she's showing you. You okay, see, okay, uh, just that's a scarf yet. Yeah. Those videos are not nude. Uh, come, come, wait, wait, let me just let me let's let's clarify what what you're watching because you're sounding as though something. X-rated. So basically, <laughs> one way we were creative with our long distance relationship was when I'm going to church in the morning and I have this beautiful dress on and beautiful shoes. I do a Skype video to say, "Oh, look at what I'm wearing today. I'm, I'm about to go to church." <laughs> then I'm saying, "I'm feeling like is that right actually?" But <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, like it, we felt that was like the highlight of my week each week. Maybe it's because of your hormones that is talking right now. But my hormones. I, 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 I didn't think about that at the time. At the time, yeah, we were busy, we were struggling to keep the connection, mm. the communication. So color is like like. Super busy. Like one two hundred percent busy throughout the week. That there's no need. I'm not able to really 
talk to him. So that was when that creative thing he come to say to do a video. I'm trying to justify myself right now. You don't, you don't I mean, yeah. Okay. So I do a video. I say, oh, hello, I'm going to try. Look at the, see the way I did my hair. Da, da, da. I'll see you later. Just in case I don't talk to you. And it goes. So go on with what you were saying. Yeah, I mean, the videos were well intended. No doubt about that. I'm saying that for um, on the receiving end of it. <laughs> I see more than the air, I see more than the gown, I see more than the dress, I see things. Um, because I'm very imaginative and poetic, um, I, I live on words, word pictures form in my head like bread and butter. <laughs> but yeah. So in my own context then, uh, one of the things that I learned even before I got into a relationship and which I, I'm st I continue to live by application wise mm. is to manage my thoughts. Hmm. Whether I'm having a sexual attraction to you or to someone else, and we'll look at that of someone else shortly, is to think of. I understand that the basic unit of whatever I'm feeling is happening in the realm of my mind, mm -hmm. and so I I try to turn that around to say I know one of the ways is you take thoughts captive in obedience to Christ mm -hmm. is by going higher than the realm of thoughts to the realm of words mm -hmm. to speak, like. The way um, I think I learned this from Creflo Dollar in one very old message, and he, he literally told the congregation, start counting from one to ten. <laughs> and then midway into the count, he said, open your mouth and say your name out loud. Then he asked them, what happened to the counting that you were doing when you had to open your mouth to say your name? And of course, the logical answer is that the counting had to stop. You can't continue to think and then do something else with your mouth. Mm -hmm. So if your mouth is saying something that is different it nips the thoughts in mm, the bud mm. and so for me what that looks like oftentimes is i pick up my phone and then call if i can't get you at the time me, to just me, talk me. and have and just have a normal conversation okay. i'll call one of my friends and talk to the person about anything or anything really um or i start listening to a message or fall asleep with the thoughts and wake up and hopefully I'll be able to get a grip on myself by then <laughs> and things like that. So, I mean, just different tips here and there. But it doesn't feel like a guilty um, sense of feeling, if you get what I mean. It's still something that is delightful <laughs> in a very innocent way, that kind of feeling like, oh my gosh, one day, one day, one day, one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day. So yeah, I kept looking forward to that one day, and that one day keeps coming every day. Hallelujah! Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. How I did, how I handled mine was. I don't know how I actually did it. Mine was very new to me, so I was all <laughs> giddy about it. I was afraid at the same time. I was um, excited about mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. but but because of my stubbornness, like I'd already done, I've done this. In a relationship, I was the one with the strong headedness and the super strong headed. The yes. just it was something to prove a point, basically. <laughs> so because I had, I had that a reputation, <laughs> that stubborn <laughs> reputation, I was I wasn't willing to like indulge, like say, oh, this is what I'm feeling. Mm. So I go almost oh, when he's talking, I'm looking into his eyes and just blinking and smiling. But then I had a thought, like I didn't. I don't think it's healthy for you both to discuss your sexual urges. Mm. It is not, especially from my experience. Yeah. I think if I had discussed it with you, uh -huh. knowing how you are feeling, mm. Mm. it would have complicated things. Absolutely. And knowing your background of, of um, sexual addiction, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been wise. So I think knowing all those things about you... Mm made me actually just nurture it within myself i yeah. think i'm glad i have this thing i've been i've always been saying it in movies and things so please as much as you can if you need to discuss it like Kola said get accountable with someone call, let, let there be someone you talk mm -hmm. to about your sexual it shouldn't be your husband your fiance your fiance, fiance of your boyfriend or whatever you call yourselves before you start rationalizing things otherwise like you think ah Isaac did not marry Rebecca before he saw her and went into her and things and you start looking for justification of how <laughs> where did that come from I don't know <laughs> I don't know but yeah just please don't discuss basically you might think it's very there's the thoughts in your mind that will be pushing to say oh tell him tell him tell him tell him tell him so that he knows tell him so that he doesn't go to another girl Please don't. You can hint it. This is how I'm mm. feeling. I don't think we should be together right now. But do have someone you can fully open your mouth to say, like Kala said, when you're counting one to ten and you stop and you talk. 
it relieves it and if your mentor the person you're talking to is an older person that have yeah, been that have, they've been through what you've been through they'll be able to give you perspective or tips on how to avoid it mm. but don't go to someone that that would say ah omo i beg you go do one go do what you would do what you do. why can't they tell me so i'm speaking pigeon i don't know if you understand like this is a nigerian pigeon then <laughs> hopefully the person will say ah go and do what you should do what what are you talking about this is this is 2021 mm-hmm. everybody's looking for a husband you are saying you want to flee from sexual temptation <laughs> look, look for someone scripturally reasonable mm. and someone that won't say ah you've committed a sacrilege you need to be purged there's a demon in you <laughs> pulling you to hell so just hopefully you're just going to lead it to a very balanced balanced person it's a crazy um, um dynamic yes but with god all things are possible and Absolutely. it will surely surely help sure um and to wrap up i think we've touched on it already mm. one way or the other in terms of the principles but the other half of um, kate's question is what if you're in a relationship with someone and you're feeling sexually attracted to someone else mm. i mean <clears throat> if that's tricky. that's that's very tricky if you're talking of re- uh, sexual attraction just in the sense of i mean as a guy we get attracted every time like <laughs> that's very, <laughs> maybe that, not that's everybody me. um during summer in the uk you go to city center you see all thank god for covid 19 last last year <laughs> yeah um i know not everybody that's not a politically correct thing to say but okay yeah, <laughs> yeah but <laughs> i basically being locked down last year made summer um a little more holy <laughs> as opposed to a typical summer when you just move around the <laughs> to the city center between here and city center you've seen things that you feel like your eyes should just fall out because everybody's just like yeah now is the time for them to undress, to undress <laughs> and still go out <laughs> <laughs> so if you're talking of that kind of attraction i mean they're very fleeting um you, you it fizzles out with time mm. but if you're talking of a pointed kind of attraction maybe with a particular person and you're in a relationship with someone else mm. the simple answer i mean the simple counsel i'll give is seek professional counseling seek professional help seek the proper so counsel of, the of, of a counselor it needs to i mean there are, it's multifactorial and it needs to be treated as such mm. and it will be different for different people the context will be different for different mm. people so there's not a one-size-fits-all response that mm. can be given to that but if it is one of those fleeting things just again turn it to an opportunity to talk that's when i'll call my wife and say hmm, you should have come with me on this journey even though you've only sent me to come and buy xyz True. but i've seen things that can't be mentioned yes. <laughs> and just joke about it and before you know it that thought is gone basically mm. um, but otherwise mm, seek help yeah and and just to um add to what you said about the flitting yeah the flitting attraction there's times I, I think for women we are mostly I, i'm talking about me sometimes i watch a movie and i'll see i'll see um one of the guys in the moon i think oh his eyes are so blue <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sexually attracted but when that first come to me and i think ah uh, ah uh, i know Color size are not blue. Stop like your blue eyes. I'm just saying. yeah. Know what your triggers are and nip them in the bud. If yours is eyes, nip it in the bud. Look at your husband's brown eyes. I think I love your brown eyes. If your trigger is um hulky men men with the abs and the thing eh, nip it in the bud know what your triggers are especially if you're married or if you're close to getting married so that when you see when you know when you know what pulls you to this and um, being attracted to another person other than you intended you would know exactly how to handle it at the time mm. but failing to recognize your weaknesses would actually affect the marriage because mm. sometimes you wishing your husband was a bit more slimmer mm. or much more happy mm. with much more three packy and much more <laughs> <laughs> much more blue eyed how can they have a camera be blue eyed that would be so weird right, but oh. yeah <laughs> green eyed as well I said these things are flitting let them be as flitting as they are don't indulge in the thoughts mm. God bless you thank you very much um, thanks for this this thoughts that's lovely and thanks to everyone I think it's 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 been a helpful episode mm. um, and yeah we look forward to seeing you my wife will say she's been telling me not to say that but yeah <laughs> it sounds like just a nice way to end to say yeah we'll see you in the next episode <laughs> um but before then keep remembering that you're not alone today god, god bless, bless you. you bye bye